Right then guys, um, I'm just making a quick video on how I did these eyes because quite a few um, people have asked me on how I did it. Um, basically, uh, the whole idea is to go from original size eye, uh, which I think is too small um, in proportion to the rest of the terminator, to a larger eye. Um, you can see on on the, my my main model, I say main because I've actually collected enough spares now I think to create a second, but I'm going to have to stop that soon before it gets too expensive. Um, that's got the uh, modified eye in. Now this idea uh, originally came from a YouTube channel called Guilo or Guilo John, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description, but um, he actually found um, to, how to make these larger eyes. Uh, so credit to him for that. Um, and uh, and I'll, as I say, I'll put the link in the description so you can go over there and subscribe. Uh, he's doing a lot of, uh, I think, other mods as well, so you might find something else interesting on there, uh, worth watching. Um, so, yeah, so the idea was to, to make a, a larger eye. Um, so I wanted to combine his modification with um, another modification I did a few weeks ago to uh, the original eyes, which was to um, put in there uh, a little bit of fiber optic um, and uh, I think it gives a, a nicer, well, a more realistic glow to the eyes. Uh, I think the standard LEDs, uh, the standard LED setup is too bright. Um, basically, if you look at it straight on and look away, you can still see dots on your in your vision. So I don't think they're meant to be quite that bright. Um, so uh, anyway, so what I did with the original eyes to start with was I put a piece of three millimeter fiber optic uh in there which which is basically this um you can get this off ebay um it's quite cheap um and then i uh basically put uh, filled filled it with with a clear resin uh which gives like a nice glassy effect on the eye um so that i did that uh, a few weeks ago with the original original eyes um and uh, so I wanted to combine it with the with the larger eye modification. So to do the the larger eye modification, what you need is uh, some of these beads, a twelve millimeter, basically just twelve millimeter chrome plated plastic beads. Um, I'm not sure if you can. I mean, I got these off eBay, but I'm not sure if you can get real chrome plated. Uh, plastic beads. Um, well, I think you probably can, but I couldn't find them anywhere. Uh, but these these are fine. Um, these these work well enough. So uh, the other thing you need is a piece of this uh, acrylic rod. Again, you can get this off eBay. I know I made the other one with fibre optic, but uh, they don't seem to do a fibre optic in, in such a thick diameter. This is actually four point eight millimeters thick. Um, and it's just basically a, a plastic rod, but you can see it, if you can see that on the camera, but you can see that it gives like a nice glare effect on the end when you shine some light on it. Um, so you need some of that. Um, first thing to do is you need to drill a hole through this bead. It's already got a small hole in it. Um, you need to enlarge that to six millimeters. Now, I used one of those big, Stand, south standing drills you know the ones where you, you you hold it securely and then you pull it down and it basically drills a nice straight hole through it even with that drill i still managed to waste a good number of these um because sometimes the drill bit would um either not go through or, or the bead would move slightly and it would create a, a slightly wonky hole or the drill bit would uh create like a not a nice finish uh, on the other side when it comes out uh, so I did waste a few of these. Um, basically, I went up in 0.5 millimeter stages, starting with three millimeters all the way up to six. Uh, and I found if you went slowly like that, you you could create uh, you know a nice enough hole. Um, once you've got your hole in your bead, um, you need to cut this down. It's uh, it's you, basically you just want maybe just under 12 millimeters, the width of the ball. Um, cut that off. And then what you'll need to do is take some some sort of uh, wet and dry paper. Fine, I think this is 2,500 grit. Uh, and then just rub it 
yeah, we'll sand it down nice and flat. Um, add some water to this when, you, when you're happy that it's flat and even and rub it again and then you'll get a nice smooth polished end to it. Uh, you need to make two of those, so two roughly 12 millimeter long pieces. Uh, again, if you wait around for the pictures at the end, you'll see uh, the various stages that I went through to make this. Uh, it probably gives you more of an idea. Um, once you've got your two 12 millimeter pieces, what you need to do then is get some paint, some black paint. Um, this is called black 2.0. Uh, I know there's a black 3.0, which is supposed to be even blacker. And the black 3.0 is supposed to be the blackest black colour you can buy. So I'm guessing now this is the, the second most blackest black you can buy. But I guess that you, you could use any black, it doesn't really matter. Any, any matte black will do, any model paint. Um, so what you need to do with the black paint is paint the inside of that hole that you drilled black. Um, and then paint the outer edge of this, the acrylic, the, the 12 millimeter acrylic rod pieces you cut, just the outside. Uh, don't paint the ends, uh, otherwise you won't get any light coming through. If you do get any paint over the ends, that's okay. Again, just rub it on the paper and it will clean it off, so you have a nice clean end. Um, <coughs> okay, so once you've painted your inner inside of the the bead and the outside of the rod. Um, what you need to do then is mix up some of this crystal clear epoxy resin. Now I've got this off eBay, again not expensive. Um, you mix three parts of the part A to one part of the part B. So I think I put about 15 drops of this in a, in a bottle lid and um, uh, 15 drops of that, five drops of that. Uh, mix it up nice and slow. You're supposed to warm these up first so put them in a in a cup of warm water or something just to warm them up. Uh, once you've mixed it up, um, you take your piece of acrylic and uh, what I did to make sure, because, because your hole is six mil and this is 4.8, obviously you got a bit of movement in there, which, which is what I wanted because I wanted it to create the effect of a little black ring around the outside of the, the main red eyeball, if you like, in the middle. So you want obviously want the piece of acrylic nice and central in that hole. So what I did is took a piece of um, a strip of um, electric, electrical tape, only about this long, I cut a, a, a thin uh, piece off it, and then just wrapped it round. So so the bottom of the piece of acrylic was was a bit fatter, so it fit nice and snug snug into this hole basically. Um, so you then slide your piece of acrylic in. Get it lined up. You can you can get a, a small I don't know a small knife or something and just nudge it around until it's nice and central inside that hole. Um, and then what you want to do is not make the mistake that I did. I just put these to start with on a piece of basically that electrical tape upside down. I thought that would be enough to seal it from the um, the epoxy dripping through and out and out the other side. It wasn't quite enough. It, it almost was, but it did. It did start to seep out, and I, I had to keep topping it up. So, I would use a piece of blue tack underneath, um, and and just push it down lightly, so it creates a, a bit of a seal on the other side, to stop that epoxy dripping out. Um, so, once you've got that nice and sealed up and ready, uh, and you've got your po epoxy ready to to use, um, I basically used a bit of this fiber optic cable to dip in into the epoxy get a nice blob on the end and then just dabbed it on the, the top and it evens out so you, uh, you take a, just keep taking droplets and, and dabbing it on until you fill up basically that hole and, and you get a nice layer of uh, epoxy over the top of that uh, acrylic rod so it creates a, you almost want to aim for a a bit of a dome really um, so but keep checking it uh, when, you know because it does have a tendency to maybe seep through a bit more into areas that it doesn't quite get to to start with so keep checking it and, and topping it up as you need I had to do this a few times after about maybe an hour and a half if it's not if it's not sinking anymore you're probably good to leave it overnight or whatever um, so leave it overnight it does take a long time for that uh, epoxy to set, um, 
ideally 24 hours but even then you still when you're touching these things you don't want to touch the top the epoxy for, for a good two days because you'll leave fingerprints on it and all sorts so but it's better to just leave it alone uh, i'm not the most patient of people so of course i was picking it up and playing around with it before it was properly set um so once that's all set um and uh and hard what you want to do next well, you don't have to do this i put i put these uh this these extra bits on the bottom you see um on the back because you technically you can make these eyes move afterwards like the originals um i'm not sure if i'm going to do that yet uh, we'll have to see but i'll put them on there just in case i could decide that i wanted the them to move um way to do that quite simply take take uh, one of the original eyes cut the the back off again you'll see that in that uh, guaylo john's uh, video you cut the back off the uh, off it and just glue it on just glue it on the back so you've got uh, super glue or whatever you use whatever you like uh, just glue that on um then you need to do some modifications to this bit um because the holes here are too small um, the original eye satin are too small for the 12mm bead so what you need is one of these step drill bits that goes up to 12mm just push it through and spin it till it enlarges it do it slowly um, because you can catch these little I don't know what they are really, but the, these little um, guides, uh, and you don't want to bend one or snap one off. So do it slowly. You will take a little bit out of them, but it's uh, it's not it's it's actually it's actually not it's not a bad thing if you do take some out of those because it actually makes uh, a nice um, contour for the for the new eye to sit in. Uh, these ideally should be about halfway. Um, if I show you on a ball, it they should be ideally about halfway along the eye like that for more for what for the what from in my opinion the most accurate location for the movie i think the original eyes are too far back uh, too sunken in the head so uh, once you've enlarged uh, the eye holes in that um it's just a case then of, of lining the eyes up um they just they just push in push them in however far you want like i say you can they still do move so you know i'll probably try and find a way to keep the uh, the movement there whilst whilst having these um so yeah that, that then you can leave it like that or glue them in or whatever you want um the original leds obviously fit still uh you can see there that it uh, it's a nice effect now still on the camera it looks quite bright but in, in real life it gives like a nice deep deep red glow uh, if you look at that you can see that um, and you can't really see that in the slide but if you look at it uh, in a bit of a brighter room you can you can still see like a nice ruby red um, effect on the eye even when the lights not on which is quite nice um, so that's it. I don't think I've missed anything else. Uh, again, there's some pictures just coming up now um, that you'll see that show the various steps that I've just explained. Um, so yeah, good luck. Any questions, let me know.